Hallelujah. We thank God you've tuned into this message by David Entry at Caris Church. No hand can help you with the fulfillment of your destiny, but the word of God. May God's hand align you further into your destiny through this word. There to be greatly advantaged in God, there are certain postures a man's spirit must adopt. For, you know, there are people who don't, have never had any experience of God doing some things directly in their lives. God showing up, they experiencing God, encountering God. There are many people who have not had that experience. And there are also people who are in church who are very dry of any encounters with God or the acts of God. Say the acts of God. I'm sure some of us will have quite a bit to say if you are asked about things that you know God has done. I'm sure you have quite a few. I have overdose to, to say. And you know God. You know there are things say there are things that happens in your life and you know that it has the fingerprints of God. Oh, it, it's like you can't deny it. But sometimes life moves on so much that it's very easy to forget you know, what God has done now. If you are positioned in a way that you always remind yourself of how God has been good to you. One of the things the devil does is to make you feel God won't be that good to you. So, in Exodus chapter, I think, 33, when Moses said, if you, if you don't go with us, if your present doesn't go with us, then don't take us because there's no point. Eh, from verse 14. He said, if your present does not go with us, then don't, don't take us because there's no point. And then, and he said, if thy present does not go with me, Carry us not up from it. Give us New King James so it's a, a bit easy to understand. New King James says that. Then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. No, don't, don't bring us. Moses was having a discourse with God, an interaction with God. And it, this is not feelings. It's in, it was intellectual. He was reasoning with God. You have to go with us. All we need is your presence. And look at the next verse. And then, then Moses begins to give an, raise an argument that people would even think that, he said, for how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight, except you go with us, so we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the others, all other people, or from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. Your presence with us makes it clear that we are different. Because what drowns others floats us. <laughs> the same body of water that others are drowning in, we are floating in it. That's the difference between the presence of God. It doesn't change the way you look. It doesn't change your skin color. It might not even change your job. The same job, but you buy a house your manager can't afford. <laughs> same. Oh, I remember one of the sisters. She was a teaching assistant for many years, but her level of loyalty and faithfulness to God's house. When the credit crunch came, that's when she bought a house. I mean, it's, it's, and others who had proper profession couldn't afford to buy a house. Could it, she, she had a contemporary who thought was better. Could not. Mean and smart person was never able to buy. But in the credit, credit crash, this lady bought a very nice house. God opened. Everything fell in place. You, sometimes you may not have to change your job, but what the other job which others are killing themselves for and leaving God, 
they are going for that job because they want to get this. God, you can be in the same place and working with God and get that without having to compromise on your work with God. Hallelujah. He said that your presence with us will make people know that we are different. Then 17 says that. So the Lord said, I will also do this thing that you have spoken. For you have found grace in my sight. This is powerful. God said, what you have said, I will do. Because you have found grace in my sight. May that be your story. May that be your story. Say, that's one of my biggest desires in life. I had the privilege of, uh, when God blesses you, things happen without you having to organize it. Things, I mean, I'm talking about extraordinary things without you having to organize it. I had the privilege of sitting with a huge giant just about an hour ago. Huge giant. We were together for about three hours. I had to leave and rush to church. And some of the great men of God, when they talk, you can tell. Sometimes you cannot be great without stab wounds. In God. Can you imagine that Joseph came out of prison and became a prime minister? And there was nowhere recorded in the Bible that Joseph was innocent from the charges that sent him to prison. He was never exonerated. It should have been the front paper. No, it was never. But the glory that came on his life made all those accusations nonsense. <laughs> God doesn't have time to defend some things, but he will glorify his name. <laughs> he has a way of glorifying his name in your life that Reverend used to preach one day in Caris. I, I think I don't think I'll forget that. He said, when you are a pastor and you have 100 members, in the church and 10 of them live at the same time it's heartbreaking even one is heartbreaking let alone 10 and then he said but what after the t- when the 10 leaves and 80 joins you know what <laughs> <laughs> the, the 10 that left was this not a problem <laughs> He said it does There's a way God can bless you that what they did against you does not even hurt anymore. <laughs> yeah. And I, I remember Jesus. Up to now, people were saying that he's, he's demon possessed. It's in the history books of the Jews that there was a, this charlatan and vagabond who we have to, we got rid of him and his devil said resurrected. We got rid of him. He didn't have to, God didn't have to prove that this is resurrected. When he asked, I told you, when he resurrected, if I was Jesus. Amen. I'll I'll go on TikTok. (laughs) I'll do a selfie and then TikTok. I said, let them know that I'm still here. (laughs) Hashtag, I'm back. They thought they could get rid of me, but hashtag, I'm back, I'm back. He showed himself alive to, that, that thing I saw in the scriptures, I was so surprised. Bible says, that God showed him openly. Yeah, Acts chapter 10, verse 40 and 41. God, God raised him up on the third day and showed him openly. But not on TikTok and Facebook. Why? That's the proper opening. <laughs> that's the problem no one can deny it because everybody but he showed him openly 41 I was, I was disappointed <laughs> ah why why not to all the people not to all the people but to witnesses chosen by God even those who saw him God had chosen before time that they have to see him <laughs> only the witnesses chosen by God even those were the ones talking uh, who saw him and ate with him after his death? He didn't have to prove a point to anybody. He didn't have to prove a point to anybody. 
And 2,000 years later, all these um, high priests and pilots, they are all dead. But Jesus, the body of Christ, is growing. Yeah, Jesus is still trending. Shout glory. glory. Please sit down. Genuineness. I serve Reverend Biakofi with genuineness, Archbishop of genuineness. And sometimes you think people are using dodgy ways to go for it. And they are getting more recognized. They are getting more. No, listen. Just walk with God with purity. You will never be left behind. That, that's what I'm trying to say. Just walk with God with genuineness. Let those who be fake be fake. If I'm your pastor and you are fornicating, or you are, uh, you are cheating on your husband or your wife, or you are sleeping with somebody's husband, or you are doing, you know, something like, and I, I said, what's going on? He said, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. No, I have to leave you. Let's just leave you and continue pastoring, love you, and believe that what you said is true. Yeah. After now, accept what you said. But give Bibles, Jesus said, don't, don't spoil the test. Leave them, let them grow with the wheat. The harvest time will come. You come to church. But there's all kinds of agendas behind the yabi yah. It's not authentic. It's not authentic. You are doing all that because you are trying to impress a guy. We will not know. We don't know. Bible said no man knows the things of a man. Save the spirit that is in the man. We won't know. And sometimes religious people are so interested in knowing who you really are. This thing you are doing. So you, you will be wasting your time. Because you will end up victimizing others who are also genuine. But let them all grow together. Oh, there's a harvest time. If this God thing is true, yeah. <laughs> then my convictions that God is raising great giants in this building will be so. But it's not everybody shouting, everybody praying, everybody shaking, everybody gyrating. Who will qualify into that? Even though God has given a lot of opportunity. Watch, watch, watch this space. In a, in a space of 10 years, you will see the difference between those who have been very genuine and pure and those who are just trying to tick a box. This thing doesn't work just by se- on the surface. This thing is real. It, to, for God to be with you and for God to bless you, for God to show up in your life, it is not fake. Others can fake results and it may look like God is with them. Give time. Even the leaders, the elders of the people, it, when they wanted to beat them in Acts chapter 5, he said some people rose up. A guy, an Egyptian, he gathered people behind him and then everything is scattered. And then uh, was the, Gamaliel said, if this thing is of God, <laughs> it will stand. It will, if it is not of God, he says that it will not stand. But if it's of God, you end up fighting against God. He said, let's leave it. When I had the privilege of sitting down with this giant a few moments ago, some of these things were coming up and sharing experiences with us. And I realized that the giants go through so much in the hands of people, but God keeps elevating them and people later on come back in. Hmm. Back in. And a certain guy took a church that belonged to them. Hmm. Insulted the pastor. Mm, I've left. You know, what is it? I've left. Meanwhile, as soon as I started doing that, other people started coming to pastor with information of how many times he has slept with their wives and slept with this? And <laughs> oh, it's bad. And the head pastor didn't say anything. He doesn't have to re- release it. You keep insulting me there. He say anything. And he went and started a church with a young man who has also been in the church a long time. Some people came and met you in the church and they took you away. Hey! The young man, he took the front line of insulting, blasting. It's wrong. What you put do is wrong. You put are no, you are not fair. Hey. And then 
I think, you see, the guy's sickness didn't stop. Eventually, people started talking. And he took it, the guy, the head pastor, ran away head pastor, took it on the, this junior pastor's wife. He had his massive share. <laughs> And the wife ran away out of the changed her name, did a passport, and ran away, left the husband. Now this guy is bitter. He's now found out. You are a wicked man. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that be genuine. Don't try to be who you are not. You might pass with us, but not with destiny. Don't judge people yes. by how you see them today. Mm. As we are serving God, give us time. Mm. Give us 10, 20 years. Give us time. Our children. Sometimes certain things in the future will tell the genuineness of some sacrifices. Give us time. Time! Pastor, the Bible says, time and chance. Happiness. Those are scriptures they taught us. We grew up with. Time and chance happiness to them all. Hallelujah. Amen. He said that oh, if your presence doesn't go with us, don't take us from here. And God said, I'll, I'll do that. Look at the next verse. You have found favor. The Lord said you found favor with your grace. And he said, please show me your glory. And God said, Mo- Moses was taking it further down. And the Lord said, I'll make my goodness pass before you. Because Satan will always try and tell you God is punishing you. Then the wicked servant said, I know you are a hard man. But always remember, in spite of what you go through, remember that God is going to turn it for your good. Why? Because he's good. So always remember that. And remember, don't be too quick to forget how far God has brought you. Don't be, don't be too quick to forget. Sometimes when you are upset, remember God has been good to you. When somebody crosses you, that, that, is, that, is, that is one of the things that I'm enjoying with God. That when somebody crosses you, before you cross them out, remember how God has been good to you. And cease fire. Cease fire. Show mercy. Because you have been shown a lot of mercy. Show mercy. Show mercy. Let me just tell you ahead of time. Those of you who intend to offend me. Um, let, me tell, let, me, let me tell you. I've forgiven you in advance. <laughs> <laughs> when you experience God, the first thing you know is God is very good. And remember how good He has been to you. You might have not gotten everything like others, but if you can remember God, you have been good to me. See how far He's brought us. When you remember how good God has been to you, number one, it helps you to be humble. Mm. Number two, it helps you to bend backwards to consider others and not to be very harsh on others. Number three, it helps to secure your place. (laughs) You, You can't overthrow somebody who is overshadowed by how God is good, how God has God is faithful. Listen, that is what it actually means to walk by faith. Somebody who has made, come to this conclusion that God is good, God is merciful. You can never take their place in God. Their position in life can never be overtaken by anybody. Oh, no, 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 no. Because God is the one behind it. And you might see some mistakes with them. You might see some things they could have done differently. But still, their heart is so grateful and humble before God. And they keep celebrating how God has been good to them. God has been merciful. They are so quick to say thank you even when no one sees thanks. So quick. 
That is where genuine thanksgiving stems from. It doesn't stem from what some good thing you have just received, but it stems from a heart of gratitude about God. You, you are good. When you are busy appreciating the goodness of God, sometimes you don't have time to be harboring or, or, or meditating on what somebody has done against you. You really don't have a lot of space for that because you are actually grateful to God. Grateful to God. No one who walks like this, knowing that God is so good, it provokes gratitude. And when it provokes gratitude, it helps you to be merciful to others. It helps you to remain humble. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. you look so pretty, Thank you, Lord. but you know you. that the way the pimples have vanished, God has been good to you. Thank you God. Yeah. And then you see somebody and you see their pimples and you knew that yours was even wilder about 10 years ago. And today, look at your face like a baby face. <laughs> yeah, your, your face is like Neyman's skin. Like a baby, baby, fresh. And sometimes, that's why, Pastor, it really humbles me. I know too many pastor friends, colleagues, contemporaries, who have, have shut down. London has closed them down. Many. And it's, just, it's not because we preach better. It's not because we pray better. It's not because we fast better. It's just God has been so good to carry side. How can we think we are better than others? When we know it's God who has been good to us. When we know it's God who has been good to us. How can we start comparing ourselves thinking we are better than others? When you know God has brought you far. When you know that God has been, hey, God has been good to you. God has been good to you. And that becomes like a, the, your meditation. God has been good to me. God, has, you know, your place is always secured in life. Amen. Yeah. And you can never stop the process of rising in the life of someone who is always aware that God, like Bishop Edible. Mm. Every time, God is good. God is good. All my life you have been faithful. Yes. Yeah. All my life. Because when you could have been caught unawares. Oh, yeah. It's interesting. Do you think it's everyone who gets caught? No. A lot of people don't get caught. No. Some who get caught and their issue becomes so big and look bad. There are others who are far, worse. ten times worse. You. There are times you're also ten times worse than the one who was caught. Yeah. Your father's original name, he changed it and his date of birth. So, you and all your family, your immigration status is not authentic. <laughs> yeah, you were born here, but still, still then, there's a, there's a, because the name has been changed. Yes. The name has been changed so much. There's so much. <laughs> There's so much. That, you know, sometimes they say, okay, uh, uh, that thing. No, 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 recently, that thing, that, um, the Caribbean problem that it was on the news. Wind rush wow. issue. Some things that have happened in the past suddenly is get is got is visited and people are now people have died because of this uh, post office scandal and their families have lamented later on now those who were behind it are now in trouble and yet there might be one or two who also were key behind it but they are they are nowhere because they are no more they they've been detached completely twenty years so in the same way. Sometimes, 20 years later, they say, okay, like the wind rush. We are checking because we found out that they've given a lot of people immigration status, and now their children have all gone to university, uh, like home students, and uh, so many things, and they've realized that then they start to check, and then your family name pops up. Bring! <laughs> say, God forbid. I I'm just giving you an illustration, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> 
your mother came from Europe as a European. <laughs> With an Italian passport. Meanwhile, it was purchased from the continent. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, sit down. Let's get serious. How many of you believe God has been good to you? How many of you know someone who is around either your age or a bit close to you or even if not close, around your age, your classmate, your schoolmate, who died suddenly? Your schoolmate, it tells you it's your same level. But you are alive. You think that guy who you were hanging out with, who is now in prison, you think if he had gotten somebody preaching to him at the time they preached to you, he wouldn't have also been in church blowing tongues, but he's in prison. He's in prison. And the two of you should have gone together. Yeah. You might have even got, gotten harsh sentence. But for some reason. And you are sitting in church judging people, complaining about ushers, complaining. You are not grateful. You have to be grateful. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Please be seated. He said, I'll make my goodness go ahead of you. Just so you remember I'm good. Wow. He said, I'll let my goodness pass before you. So you will remember. You will know that I'm good God. God has been good to us. Thank you for listening to this message by David Entry. We pray you have been strengthened and enlightened. You can connect with David Entry on all relevant social media platforms, including Instagram and LinkedIn. You can also hear more messages from David Entry on all relevant streaming platforms and the Caris Church app. Don't forget to like and share the message. Be blessed.